Welcome to video 24 in series 3 and in this video I'll show you a convenient way to spawn the enemies. So what I'm going to do is to have a spawner that just spawns a bunch of enemies within a, a certain radius. Currently I have the evil cube in the scene and I could set them up in the scene but that's not what I want because later I'm going to have using the trigger an event will happen and then many spawners will spawn enemies and that's what I'm after so I don't want them in the scene to begin with so I'm going to turn the evil cube into a prefab okay and then I'm going to uh, make a new game object so I'll just create an empty I'm going to position it somewhere so perhaps like right here uh, behind the wall like that and I'm going to call it enemy spawn okay and then I'm going to make a new script and I'm going to call this spawner and I'll just attach the script to this game object and open it up all right and as usual I'll change my line ending and put in the namespace All right, and uh, I'm going to use a certain, uh, I guess, a certain method here that Unity has called inside unit sphere. It's quite handy. Well, what it'll allow me to do is to generate a random position within a certain radius of the spawner, and then I'm going to instantiate the enemy at that randomly selected position. Okay. Uh, so my spawner will have a number of uh, enemies to spawn. So I'll make a public int, an integer, uh, number of enemies. Okay, and I'll set that in the inspector. And then I'll have another one, private float um, spawn radius. Yeah, that makes sense. Spawn radius, say, uh, five units. Okay, and then... Uh, I'll guess I'll just figure it out as I go along. I'll make a new method here. Void spawn object. Oh, and of course I need a public game object. Not that. Public game object. Uh, object to spawn. Okay. And I'll slot that in in the inspector. That's going to be the enemy. So coming back here, what I'm going to say, I'm going to iterate through the number of enemies. So for each enemy, I'm going to create a spawn position and then spawn them at that randomly selected position. So I'm thinking I'll also need a uh, private vector 3 spawn position. And I'll set this in this function I'm going to use a for loop so for int i starting from zero oops i is equal to zero so for loop you start you tell it you start with any old integer you just make this up and you say I'm gonna start from zero you can start from any number and then you're gonna say uh, and it's going to keep on going while i is less than number of enemies so this is what it's going to count up to an i plus plus so it means that i is going to be added to, it's going to have one added to it each time the for loop runs so just to recap since i explained that terribly what is going to happen a for loop i start with this number i made up it's called i you could call it anything and i said i this is going to start at zero. I want i to keep on incrementing until it is less than, uh, so, well, sorry, so long as it's less than number of enemies. Once it is equal to number of enemies, and it, it, this happens each uh, time the for loop runs, it gets incremented by one. Once it is equal to number of enemies, the contents of the for loop will not execute and uh, it'll be complete. Okay, so I'm going to then 
uh, create my spawn position, right? So spawn position is equal to transform dot position plus uh, that inside unit sphere stuff that you just saw right here. Okay. So I'll type there random dot inside unit sphere uh, times my spawn radius. Okay. So say, for example, the spawner is currently at this position here where it is minus 11. Uh, it's zero in the Y minus two in Z. So when I run that method, a spawn position may get created. So this inside unit sphere, it's times five. So I could end up having like a, an X of two, a Y of one, and a Z of say, uh, perhaps three. And then that vector will then get added to the position. So I'll have a, basically a random position relative to the center. So relative to this enemy spawn. And so for each enemy that I'm going to instantiate, I'll generate a new spawn position and make use of that. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, all right. So once I've got that done, I need to instantiate the enemy. So I'll then say instantiate object to spawn. Object to spawn. There we go. And uh, where am I going to do that? I'm going to do it at the spawn position. Now I don't need to worry about if the object is a bit above the ground or a bit too below the ground because it's this enemy has a nav mesh component on it. The it'll get it'll it'll get slotted onto the nav mesh. It'll get planted onto the na nav mesh. It takes care of that for me. Now if you were instantiating objects that you didn't want to fall through the floor accidentally then you would for example have to do the following you'd have to say then that spawn position uh you would you would capture this in another vector so i'd create a new vector three here i'd say vector three adjusted position is equal to new vector three and then the x for example is spawn position dot x then this is where I don't want it to fall be below the floor. So I might give it a position, a hard coded position of one. Then I'll say spawn position dot Z. And then this is my adjusted position. And then I would instantiate the object at that adjusted position, right? So I prevent it from, for example, falling through the floor. All of them will be spawned at the same height, but I'm not doing that. So I don't need to do that. And I don't have to worry about that. Uh, so I'll just say instantiate object spawn position at that position and just a quaternion uh, dot identity. So no particular rotation except for just the default one. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to call this. So I will call it in the start method. Uh, so I'll just say spawn object. All right. And uh, prob probably I can use it. I might just comment out uh, the update method. I don't think I will need it. And if all is well, this should work. Uh, now I need to put in my prefab, evil cube, and I need to say how many uh, I need. Uh, let me just try, say, five to begin with. And let me delete evil cube from the scene so I don't need this one anymore. All right, now let's make this a little bigger. Hit play. Let's see what happens. Oh, perfect. Did you see that in the top window? There are five enemies. They all spawned perfectly. Fantastic. And how about I blow them up? Yep, let me just... Sorry for that. Let me go to the maximize. So there, my cursor is locked. Bam. All right. Okay, so that worked nicely. Uh, of course, I can increase that uh, to more enemies. For example, if I put 10 and then I hit play, you'll see in the top there that all of a sudden there are lots and lots and lots of enemies. And of course, I can blow them up as well, just the same. Now, this is going to get a little ugly, don't you think? Like, I have so many enemies. What happens to them, you know, when you destroy them? 
Well, yes, I should be removing them from the scene because each one there is just taking up resources. So what I should really do is go back to my script, my grenade explosion script. And I should say that um, when this object is hit, you know, I should say that uh, if it's an enemy, if I know it's an enemy object, I should destroy it after uh, some period of time. So how can I know whether it's an enemy? Let me go to my prefab. Did I mark it as an enemy? No, it is untagged. So how about I give it the enemy tag? Okay, that's good. And let me go back to the script and I'll say that if, so you remember this, this is the explosion work method. And I'm going to say if hit collider dot, uh, dot tag or rather dot compare tag. Uh, and what's the name of that tag? It's enemy. Then, uh, let me just think about that. Yep, and I need another bracket. There we go. If the hit collider, what was hit by the overlap sphere from the explosion, if it was an enemy, then in that case, I should destroy it. So destroy a hit collider game object and after a certain duration I should make a new variable here really I should put in a private float destroy time and say that's like for example seven seconds okay and just put in here destroy time okay now the best thing for me to do is to just go and try that out all right Hit play, jump back in, okay. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Do you remember that I had a, another script that actually deactivates the enemies? So there you go, when I start all the enemies are deactivated, it's because anything with a tag of enemy that happens. So what I should do is to uh, get rid of this script here called find enemies. So I should get rid of that now on wherever it's attached because what it does is it goes through, it finds every game object with the tag enemy and then uh, deactivates it. All right, so jumping back in, uh, pretty much, let's have a look through it. My trigger, yeah, and I had attached it to the player. So I'll just get rid of the script here. All right, that takes care of that bug. And now if I hit run, okay, all the enemies are there. And if I blast them, then after seven seconds, they'll be gone. So I just have to wait for a moment. And there you go. Okay, so they're all destroyed after a bit of time. All right, so that was it for this video. You saw how to spawn uh, enemies in a convenient way. So now in the next video, I need to show you how to use events. Because what I want to do is to have uh, like spawners like many spawners but they don't spawn the enemy until something happens until a certain trigger happens and i don't want to have that trigger you know going and accessing each uh, enemy spawn and then telling it to spawn that's that's really inconvenient and a bit slow it's better if i just have an event that takes care of that for me so we'll see that in the next video all right thanks for watching and see you then